Howdy, howdy everybody, this is Tylee Cross coming to you with a Minecraft 101 Let's Play video. So we are actually going to be changing the format of this because, you know, frankly, this is a Minecraft 101. So we're going to start doing some tips and tricks and start talking about how you can survive and play the game of Minecraft without actually going through and watching me build stuff and create things. You want to know the main things that you can be successful in your Minecraft game. So the last time when we went through this world and started it, we talked about the primary things of food, shelter, and I said clothing, but it's really food, shelter, and a place to sleep, or at least a bed. And we came across this village, and as you can see from our inventory, we got quite a few things, including three diamonds that we have. So today I thought I would go through and talk about villages and villagers. And as you can see below me, there are quite a few villagers that are just kind of walking around the area and all of our little houses and stuff. So the structure of villages vary between the biomes. And when I'm talking about biomes, I mean general areas. So there are several different biomes in the game of Minecraft, and some of those include plains, mountains, taiga forests, uh, the desert, and so forth. So you will find different structures of villages, different houses, now, uh, based on the materials that they have in those areas. So right here, we actually have a plains village, even though it borders between a mountain biome, which is right there where those mountains are, and the plains, which is there right behind us. This is still considered a plains village. The villagers, if you look on the wiki, the Minecraft wiki, which is a great website, and I'll include that link in the description. It is a great resource of everything that you need to know regarding the game of Minecraft. Uh, what blocks are what, what villagers do when they do things, and why they do things. So uh, in the wiki, it will actually describe to you what each profession or job that a villager will have and uh, they are good for trading. They also will wear different clothes based on the villages that they live in. So let's go check out this village. I know we've already gone through it, but just to kind of give you a description of things that you're kind of looking for when you are going into a village. So let's do that now. All right, so now that we've made our way down from the very top up there where that house was way up there, uh, let's talk about the town. So obviously villages can be structured differently. This one happened to have spawned right over this big nice ravine, which is great for beginning game because there's so many materials that are found in a, a ravine. And as you can see, even down below, there's some iron ore. That's the little speckled stuff that uh, is in the gray rock. It's kind of a copper kind of a color. And then straight down below is some iron excuse me, some uh, coal. So those are great beginning blocks that we really do need. So this is actually a great spawn. All right, so let's talk about the village. So you see right beside me here, this is a bell. This means this is the town center. This is where all of the villagers will come to kind of chit chat and talk up their morning and talk up their evening, just kind of whatever it is that they do. And as you can kind of see, there are several different houses in this area. This is kind of a weird one because it's split up because of the ravine. But basically, the villagers of this town will go through and congregate in this area by this bell at some point in time during their day. Now, if you'll review the wiki, and I'll put the little thing up uh, here beside, as you can see there's different times of day that they do different things. There's a work day. There's a gossip day. There's another part of the work day. And then there's basically sleep time. And as you can see behind me, you see the 
uh, tool smith that's kind of going in and out of the house there. And that's because that is where his workstation is. So let's take a look at that workstation so that you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. So as you can see here, the toolsmith, this is the smithing table, and this is his particular workstation. If I were to break that, he would turn into an unemployed villager because I have not made any trades with him. Now, when we're talking about trades, every single villager that has a profession, you can right click on them and they will tell you who they are, what their experience level is here as a novice, <coughs> and then what his current trades are. Now these trades are created and are based on this particular workstation right here, this specific block. If I were to break this block and then remake it or set it back down again, well, so let's do this. Okay, and as you can see, the toolsmith has now changed his clothes. So he's no longer a toolsmith. But if I lay that back down again, now he's going to say, hey, this is an open workstation. And as you can see, he changed his clothes again. So he has now taken up the profession of toolsmith. Now, if I right click on him again, he may or may not have the same trades. It really just depends. And as you can see, it's actually the exact same trades. So let's keep doing this a couple of times and let's see if he will actually change his trades. And there we go. He has now changed his trades, one emerald for a stone axe or one emerald for a stone shovel. Now, if I had emeralds, I would trade with him just to show you what that was like. But essentially, when you start to trade with him, uh, he will lock in these particular starting trades. What that means for you is, is that if you like what's here, chances are he's going to have some really good stuff as he moves up in his experience level. Now, in order to fully lock in those trades, meaning that he will never change them, you actually have to get him above the novice level to at least an apprentice. Once he gets to an app apprentice, there's nothing that you can do that will change his experience level. And he will not despawn or not decide that one day he would rather be a butcher instead of a toolsmith. Okay, so that's kind of the goal for villagers. Now, the other thing, when you come across a village like this, you want to protect these guys because these guys, this is your success in the game. Again, it depends what kind of a game that you want to play. Do you want to play the game where you're just adventuring and exploring everywhere? Or do you want to play the kind of game where you settle someplace, where you create a base, you create uh, a village or continue to grow a village into different things? It really just depends on how you want to play. I'm more of the let's find a place to build and build a base and grow a community. And when I say community, I mean a community of villagers who are doing my bidding. I mean who are helping the community to succeed and grow and you know what I mean. Okay, all right, let's move on. So now that the toolsmith has his particular job. Once we get some emeralds, then we can trade with him. All right, let's move on. We need to be careful here. All right, so let's move on. Let's talk about these guys. This is an iron golem. He is the protector of the village. He is the friend of the villagers. And if I do anything to hurt any of the villagers, if I was to even accidentally punch a villager, not only would the villager be really angry with me and probably not want to give me prices, he'll actually increase his prices, but this young shiny dude will come after me. He will protect the village from um, monsters that spawn at nighttime when they come into the village, particularly zombies. He'll go right after zombies. Uh, I don't know if he'll actually go after skeletons, I know he does ignore creepers. I learned that the hard way as I ran behind him for protection and the creeper just continued to follow me. So, but he is the protector. Now, villagers create these golems when there are three things that are met. One, the villagers can gossip. They get to talk to each other. 
Number two, they have a bed to sleep in. And number three, they have a workstation. Those three things add up to the creation of golems. This is where iron farms come into play. Now with a new update to 1.16, which I actually upgraded to, oh, now I'm gonna die. See, this is what happens when you even accidentally attack a golem. <sighs> yep, that just happened. It did just happen. Just in case you were confused, I did just accidentally hit a golem, and he did just kill me. Let's go get our stuff. Because it is spewed all over the place. So if nothing else, I hope that gave you a good lesson of how the golems protect the village. So 1.16 actually changed the mechanics of the iron farm. And we'll go over that in more detail when we start talking about farms and success uh, in a village and kind of growing the community once you decide to settle someplace. Okay, let's move on and talk with, once we get our materials, did we have any others that fell down here? Don't see anything. All right, so let's move over and talk about some of the other professions that you would want to look for. And as you can see, the little piggies are swimming and they're hanging out with the cows. So I'm going to guess that this is either attached to a butcher's house, which it is not. But a lot of times you'll see this in villages. So let's get over to the main part. There's nobody in there. Sorry, Mr. Gollum, I really didn't mean to hit you. Let me get this out of my hand so that I don't look as scary. Because I know you're really afraid of me. Excuse me. Okay, I guess I was able to say everything I needed to say. We are clear. All right, so now let's talk about one of the other really cool professions, and I think he was up here. Let's look. Yes, so this building here is the coveted building in a village. This is the blacksmith. So this young man, or woman, I suppose, because they're gender neutral, I'm guessing, in this game, although they do have a very masculine appearance. Anyway, so if he were actually wanting to talk with me, this is obviously his house, or not. Yes. So as you can see, the weaponsmith, you see his level as novice, and currently his trades are that 15 uh, coal for one emerald, and then three emeralds for an axe. So let's just go through and trade with him. I don't want to give away all my gold, but if I do that... And you can see that his experience level goes up toward the next level. So let's just see if we can get him up to apprentice. I think we can do one more trade, especially after I just got through saying I didn't want to use up all my coal. And there I did. So you can see the bar is all completely full, novice. And then if we kind of watch him, you can see all the little particle effects there. That particle, those particle effects meaning are, excuse me, those particle effects basically mean that he is changing his experience level. And if you see on his belt right here, he's got this little tan thing. That is basically his rank. And his rank, if we wake him up, is actually going to be apprentice. And as you can see here, He's very grateful that I made these trades with him. So now he's starting to lower his prices. So not only did he lower his prices on his original trades, but he's also added some additional trades because he's changed to apprentice. Any villager that you have that does this, that you trade with, will have these kinds of effects. I'm going to let him go to sleep. Now the other thing that I do when I am in a village besides trying to sleep the night away, if at all possible, because 
we do want to stay safe. There's beds in there. Let's go in there. The other thing that I like to do is to protect the villagers. So the mobs will still continue, especially once you get into the village, it sees it as a target. It may stay away from that particular village until that point in time. And if you can see off in the disc distance, the little fire things, those are zombies that are on fire and they're heading for the trees because it's shade. The sun kills the, the zombies and it will light them on fire and they will die. So just like anything, it wants to try to preserve its life as much as possible. So once you come into the village, it sees it as a target and you will see mobs, monsters or mobs as we call them, uh, to spawn in and then they will go after the uh, villagers. And as you can see, there is actually a zombie that is inside of this village. I am in that house. I'm going to put him outside and make him burn because I don't have any weapons on me. So I'm just going to let him burn. All right, he has now died and he has left us some rotten flesh. Now, as gross as it sounds, when you're hungry, you can actually eat, <clears throat> eat rotten flesh. I know, it's really kind of gross. And it can sometimes give you a little bit of poison effect. But if you're really needing to eat as a last resort, this is where you should probably consider as a last resort food source. Moving on. And they're like breadcrumbs. They just show up everywhere. Okay, so you want to make sure to protect, whoop, you want to make sure to protect your villagers, especially from things like skeletons. Did you guys jump? I totally jumped. I did not expect to see that skeleton there. I was so focused on that little bit of rotten flesh there, you see it floating, that I totally missed those skinny little bony legs of the skeleton. But I sure did not miss his arrow in my knee, as you can see right here. All right, let's move out of the way. So we're just gonna get a few of these dirt blocks because we want to protect the villagers. When we're protecting them, we're just basically gonna block them in their houses so that they cannot get out. I know it sounds cruel, but we will need these villagers at some point in time in the future. So we want to protect them and preserve them and make sure that these zombies don't get into their houses and eat their brains. So one of the things that we have to do is rescue that guy. So we need to go and dig down so that we can let him climb back mm -hmm. up. That might help him but not die in the process. Interesting. Oh, it was the golem. The golem killed an enderman. That's called an ender pearl. But where did the golem go? All right, let's come down here and rescue this poor little villager. Where is he? Where did you go, little villager? We're just going to create... There you are. Is that enough? There. Now he can come up. And now we have creepers. Those are creepers. And now we have creepers in the village. Maybe they will push each other off. I wonder if I can get close enough to them to make them drop. All right, that works. Okay, so now we just have to watch where these villagers sleep at night. And I'm gonna take my bed and I'm gonna go ahead and block this guy in 
because I know that he is already here. All right, so he is now safe. Now, in order to sustain a village, we have to have at least two villagers. You have two villagers, then you can breed them by giving them food. They exchange it back and forth, and they will make little villagers. And then those little villagers can continue to grow and make new villagers. All right, welcome back. So the sun is a about to go down as you can see over here we've got two villagers they were just kind of chatting it up over there so they will be making their way to some house someplace whichever has a bed so if I were to give them a bunch of food between them they would start passing that back and forth and then creating a baby villager but we're not going to watch that and as it is, it does not appear as though they have any food to exchange between them. So they are doing what's called gossiping. So let's see where this blacksmith goes. So now we see his house is right next to his shop. So now we have that. We have two more villagers. Let's see where they go. And then we are going to go ahead and lock them in as well. All right, so we have four villagers. So now that our villagers are safe in there, houses and we have talked about the nature of villages and villagers we'll go through a little bit more detail at a later time but thanks for joining me for tiley's tips and tricks if you like what you saw and you want to see more please hit that like button and most importantly hit that subscribe button so thanks for joining me today and we'll see you later bye now